Well, we've seen before <coughs> that you can have pretty good success spraying latex paint, and that's great, but uh, the problem with spraying sometimes is, is the overspray. You need some type of a paint booth set up, you need the spray equipment, and even with that, the overspray kind of can get around and get everywhere. It's not a big deal cleaning up, it's just latex paint, but uh, what about other methods? So I've tried brushing latex paint on and I've had pretty much zero success. I, I can't get away from the the streaks that the paintbrush leaves, whether I'm using an expensive brush or a cheap foam brush. But I have had some success with a roller, uh, just a, a little foam roller. In fact, the panel right here that you can see was done with a roller. All this paint was rolled on. It was done the same way that I do the spray paint. I thin it down uh, to about the same viscosity, and I just use a foam roller, put it on, several coats, about four coats on this, let it dry, and wet sand it to get some of the orange peel off and then buff it and you know you can you can kind of see there's pretty good reflection on that so we're going to go ahead and finish up the, the painting on the fuselage here using a roller so let me get this panel out of the way and I've laid this side out just using a template, put on like that, and then just some, some blue painter's tape. Uh, I was using the green, but I ran out of it, so I'm using the blue today. And now we're going to go ahead and roll on the first coat of, of blue paint on this stuff. Already got it mixed up, and this is thinned down, you know, around 25%, the same as I do with the uh, spray paint. And a couple things here. This piece of glass, hopefully this shows up right here, the piece of glass I'm using as my paint tray. So we're just going to do a little bit of paint at a time. Pour that on the glass. I've been painting some other pieces. So I have my foam roller already. And it's just a nice smooth surface foam roller. Let it pick up the paint. So the reason for using the glass is it's a nice smooth surface. Uh, if you used a paint tray with all the ribs in it, all those ribs would indent the foam and that would all transfer right onto the paint here. Okay, now I'm starting to mess with it too much, but that's the idea. We just used smooth surface foam roller with the paint thinned down about 25% with water. What that, the reason for thinning it is it's going to help it flow a little more, remove some of the orange peel. Still going to leave us with some orange peel, more so than if we had sprayed. Spray will leave you a smoother surface, so it takes less work to finish it, but here we're using less work when the masking off process. So there's your trade off. We're going to put a few more coats on this and then we'll see what it looks like. First coat's dry, ready for the second coat. Um, here's a little trick. Put the roller and the brush in bag, zipped it up, and that keeps the paint from drying on the roller. This is, if you're going to be rolling multiple coats, this is a lot better idea than cleaning out your roller every time. After you clean it out, you need to build up all the paint in the roller again to make it work properly. And with a piece this size, you'd be almost done rolling by the time you really had it working properly. So it's much much better idea just to put it in a little bag. Um, some people refrigerate it, uh, but here in the basement, it seems to work just fine. Just letting it out, but put it in the bag, zip it up, good to go.
take our paint, our paint tray, and glob on a little bit. There you go, second coat. Let's come back and do a third. Two coats on, time for the third coat. Um, probably can't see much from that angle, but there's still a lot of green showing through this. So I'm um, optimistic two more coats will, will get us covered up, but we'll see. Here we go. Okay, I'm ready for the fourth coat. Don't know if this will be the last one or not. Let's still see a little bit of the green through there. We'll see what it looks like after this coat, but I want to make sure we get plenty of coverage. Good. Well, the painting's all done. It did take one additional coat, so that was a total of five. And I didn't want to show you the other one. I think you've probably seen enough painting by now. But now it's time for sanding. We're going to start with some wet sanding, seeing if we can get this orange peel off. And we'll see how this ends up looking. Probably time to speed it up a little bit. Well there you go, that's the first pass through with the sandpaper, 1000 grit. That's going to do most of the work right there. That's removing most of the orange peel that you see, but it's going to leave the surface kind of scratchy. So now we start with 1200 grit. We're going to smooth things up a little bit. With both the 1000 and the 1200, I'm trying to stay away from those tapes and any high spots. We're going to get that stuff later, but right now, let's do some more sanding. Okay, time to switch over to 1500 grit. We're going to start working on the tapes just a little bit, do the whole area. Be a little bit careful around the edges still. And finally, some 2000 grit over everything to try to remove all the scratches and smooth it up. Well, that's it. The sanding's all done. And look what I did right there. I made a boo-boo. I sanded through a little high spot so you can see the green underneath. No problem. We'll clean that up later. Uh, just a little artist brush with some blue paint on there and no one will ever know the difference. We're going to get it all cleaned up and all the residue off and ready for some polishing compound. All right, time to bring the shine back. I've tried a few different polishing compounds. This is the latest one I'm working with. It's a two-step Meguiar's. This is the Ultra Cut, and it's the more aggressive of the two. We're also going to use this with a, a little more aggressive pad here. This yellow foam pad is kind of open pour, and it's sort of aggressive. So as you'll see, we're not going to go real hard on this. I've soaked the pad in some water and spun it to fling off the excess so it's damp. Now we're just going to put a little bit of this compound on there, like so. And then we're going to work it around the area, kind of smear it on so it doesn't all fling off when we start it up. I got this set to the lowest speed, and we're just going to lightly sort of work our way around the piece. 
being careful of those raised edges. Uh, the tape edges aren't too bad, but the tops of the longerons that, that stick up, you want to be a little bit careful around. So as you see, I'm sort of working from one longeron, and then I change and work, work toward the other one. What this is doing is removing a lot of the, uh, a lot of the haze. It's going to bring up a pretty good looking shine. You'll see when we wipe this down, it's not going to look too bad. You don't want to spend a lot of time. You can see just about done here. And that's it. So now what we want to do is wipe all of that stuff off because that's the more aggressive compound. We want to get that off the surface and then we're going to switch to a lighter compound. You can already see the difference in shine between that top piece and the piece below that hasn't had anything done to it. It's going to get better than this though, I promise. Here's the next thing we use, the Ultra Finish, and it's a much finer grit. We're also going to use a different pad. This is the black foam pad. It's a much more closed cell much softer and it's harder to do damage with this pad you can polish it a little bit longer get a little more aggressive with it you can do damage uh, I have and I'm sure I will again but it can always be repaired one of the keys for using any of this is not to let it dry out if the surface starts getting dry on you um, just take a little spray bottle with some water and spritz the surface to get some liquid back in for that lubrication. If it dries up, it'll heat up, and that's where you can hurt latex paint is with the heat. So you can see I'm going a little bit slower, spending a little more time with this pad, more so than I did with the yellow pad. And this is really going to bring out the shine. There you go. That's it. Didn't really take that long, did it? So what's our finished product look like? There you go. That's a pretty good shine right there. Not so much up there. I haven't touched that piece yet. Get down to this piece. Very nice. Now the lower two pieces here, you can see there is some gloss to it. There is some shine. But with the orange peel, you just don't have that smooth surface to get the, the nice reflection that you'd like to see. And up here, that's a much nicer reflection. Hard to believe that's all done with a roller. No spray equipment was harmed in the making of this video. Very, very nice. Well, there you have it. Rolled on latex paint. Who'd have thunk it? What a nice finish. Check out wienerdogarrow.com for more information on latex paint, and be careful what you might see in a good reflection.